Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be going over and looking at the 5 mistakes that can always lose you games in Season 12. With how the meta has shifted in the new season, it seems like quite a few people haven't caught up yet. We're going to be breaking down some of the common mistakes that we have seen and how you can avoid making them. If you felt a little bit behind with these new season changes, then be sure you stay tuned because we have some great tips. Nonetheless, let's get right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got a problem that plagues even the highest levels of play. That's right, summoners, we're talking about bad itemization, which is better known as losing to the shopkeeper. Itemization is a fairly sensitive topic in League of Legends, however, its importance has skyrocketed these past two seasons. With the new item rework and the introduction of the new dragons, being able to build the best items has become a necessity for all players. In the older days of League, there was rarely that much build diversity. Marksman built Infinity Edge and then Bloodthirster, Mages grabbed Zhonyas and then Deathfire Grasp, tanks all built the same items, etc. Now, each game tends to offer a unique opportunity to adapt so you and your team have a fighting chance at all times. Some champions offer build paths that allow for faster spiking such as Kai'Sa. She is able to build a long-range poke build that provides her team with AP, or she can instead opt for an AD build that spikes early for more fighting power. Tanks can now look to itemize Sunfire for additional damage, Camp Tank for diving power, Frostfire for CC, and etc. Even supports have quite a few build options that can give their team a slight power boost. Need to kite or dive? Won't well, grab a Shirelius. Need sustain for long fights? Moonstone is your best friend. Gotta dive with your team and do more damage? Well, even Shroud is finally here. The game is more complex than it has ever been when it comes to itemization. To make sure you don't fall prey to the shopkeeper's ridiculous purchases, we recommend you learn the purpose of items. Ask yourself why a certain item is built and what it provides. Be sure you don't follow a simple cookie cutter build every single game. For example, we provide a lot with our other videos, but just take it with a grain of salt. If you're unsure why you build a certain item, then be sure to search around. There are resources all around you, which will lead us to our next point. And that's right, before we dive into the next common mistake that we've seen, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com, where you can go ahead and view our great catalog of challenger coaches that can personally create a walkthrough to your dream rank. They're sure to help you with any and all questions that you have. Got a busy schedule? Well, we've got you covered. Our trained roster of coaches are here 24-7 to really help you reach your goal. Plus, we've got a sale going on right now. Just use the code WINTER for 20% off your ProGuide subscription. So what are you waiting for? Check us out and take advantage of this amazing sale. Regardless, let's get back into the video and dive right into the next big mistake that we often see. I'm sure you've all heard it before, but we've got to say it again. A lot of players at the moment are not playing around their win con. With the new season changes, games have started lasting longer and are currently favoring hyper carries. These hyper carries are often found in the bot lane with champions like Jinx, Aphilios, or Vayne. However, they can also be found in the jungle with somebody like Viego or mid lane with champions like Corki. Regardless of where the hyper carry is, it seems that many people have forgotten how to play with them. When it comes to hyper carries, they easily become your best way to victory with enough time. If you're able to get these champions a lead, the amount of time that they need to completely take over the game only gets shorter. The important thing to note is that hyper carries will often reach power spikes and their allies will not play around them. Whether you're the hyper carry or you're just an ally on your team, it's important to know how to play with them. Now, this doesn't mean that you should drop everything and pour all of your resources into them and follow every single play that they make. Instead, you're going to want to communicate your shot calls better, and be sure that before you make a move on a big play, that your carry is nearby. If you're playing a tank, then be sure to frontline for the said carry. Maybe you're the support, then provide vision so they can go ahead and safely farm and try to peel them in fights. Are you a bruiser or a mage? Then use your kit and provide CC and damage so that your carry can deal high amounts of DPS in the meantime. Are you the hyper carry that we're talking about? Then put your ego aside and be sure to play with your allies. You are your team's late game insurance and will most likely have all the gold. Make responsible plays and let your allies know how they can best help you out, so that way you can go ahead and help them to victory. Overall, League of Legends is all about team play. Put your pride aside and work with your team to get what you came here for, a nice, clean victory. Speaking of hyper carries, since games are often looking to go long, it's important to understand your team's strong points. With this in mind, the biggest issue that we've seen lately is that players feel like they need to fight for every single objective. While you shouldn't just give most objectives for free, that doesn't mean that you have to fight tooth and nail for each one. If your team is looking to scale for mid to late game, who cares if you lose that first dragon? You can even encourage the enemy team to take it so that way you can go ahead and safely gank top or get a free herald. It's best to view it like this. Why risk your chances of winning for something that won't impact the game by the time that you're strong enough? If you're looking to scale, then you'll most likely outrange and outdamage the enemy as the game goes long. This means that if the enemy team has three dragons, you'll most likely be stronger than them at the fourth, which will allow you to deny their scaling and also furthering your own. That being said, not every team comp has a hyperscaling lane. Use that to your advantage. Be the team that takes objectives for free early and use that pressure to punish the scaling laners. The biggest mistake that you can ever make is fighting for the sole purpose to fight. If that dragon or herald isn't going to change the entire game, then there's no reason to risk losing a fight for it. 
This is especially true when you have a team composition that needs you to be at the objectives first. If you have a Caitlyn and Ziggs, but the enemies set up Vision and Dragon first, then give up the Dragon and use that time to push lanes and get Vision control elsewhere. We're not saying that you have to give objectives for free, but understand that you don't have to fight for them every single time. Trade the objective for a dive, trade it for better vision control, use that spare time to get a free gank off, invade the enemy jungler during their timer, etc. Use your time effectively and play to your team's strengths. At the end of the day, we can't force you or your allies to give objectives, but be sure to communicate with your allies whether or not you guys scale enough to care about the objective. Which actually leads us to our next point. Now before we continue on with the video, don't think for a second that we have forgotten about everybody's favorite pro guides tradition. For our question of the day today, we want to ask you guys, what is one mistake that you see your allies make? Personally, it seems like every day I run into support that messes up my freeze. Regardless, let us know your answers in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at the power of communication. When it comes to League of Legends, it can be pretty controversial to talk about communication. Some players feel like the community is far too toxic and that you should approach every game with a mute all attitude. I fall under this category, I just mute everybody. Others feel that League would improve if there was a better way to communicate with allies such as a built-in team voice feature. Regardless of where you stand in on this, we think it's important to communicate with the allies in moderation. Of course, flaming your allies is never a good thing to do as it doesn't provide any benefit for you or your team. However, we do think that you should be talking to your allies and providing important information for them to play around. One big lack of communication that we often see with teams is not telling each other about power spikes. If you know that you are going to be weak at first dragon, then it can be game changing to let your allies know that they shouldn't fight it. Do you spike incredibly hard at 3 items? Well tell your team so that way you can go ahead and see us before you get into a big fight. Does your team come favor a specific playstyle? Be sure to let your allies know so everybody can act accordingly. Or maybe you know exactly how a jungler paths because you've played them before or you just mastered that champion. Regardless of what it is, let your team know. Almost any information can be useful to somebody. That being said, we don't recommend that you constantly blow up the chat with micromanaging requests and actions. Some players may find it annoying and end up muting you, which means that they won't hear you at all. It's all about finding a balance and how to communicate with your team, but most importantly, be sure that you communicate with them. Use your chat, time summoner spells, make shot calls, and be sure that your pings are useful. Don't assume that most things are common sense, be the reason that your team wins. It'll take some practice, especially if you're far more of an introvert, but in the end, it will definitely pay off. Last but certainly not least, we've got arguably one of the biggest mistakes that we can see people make season after season. This is a mistake of trying to force yourself to have a champion ocean, which is a little bit bigger than a pool. Being able to play multiple champions can be incredibly useful and offers a really fun play style. However, unless you're grinding out tons of games every day, you're setting yourself behind and shooting yourself in the foot. Time and time again, I'm sure that you have heard to one trick a champion and this time is no different. If you're not willing to one trick a champion, at least narrow your pool to B3 or less so that way you can go ahead and continue to grow your knowledge of the game and matchups. Eventually with enough time, you'll know every combo and matchups like the back of your hand. Being able to know the ins and outs of champions makes all of the previously mentioned mistakes easier to avoid. You don't have to worry about itemization because you have learned the best way that you can build. You'll be able to understand the win con better because you'll know your champion and their role. Communicating with your allies will be easier since you'll know when you're strong and thanks to your muscle memory on the champion, your macro and awareness will increase. This will only make shot calls better. Regardless of what champion you choose to main and practice on, just be sure to narrow your champion pool down to a manageable size. Alongside this, make sure that your practice is meaningful. Understand how you win certain matchups, ask yourself why certain items are built, question whether or not that you should be positioning a certain way. Be aware of this as much as possible. And before we continue on, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? Join up! Anyway, let's get back into the video and take a look at our closing thoughts. Climbing and improving is always going to be difficult and you are sure to make mistakes along the way. Wanting to be better is one of the hardest steps in climbing and being able to realize that you're in control of your own learning and gameplay will definitely take forever to master. However, you've already taken your first step by watching a video like this. It means that you're willing to learn and willing to improve. And don't take that for granted. An old friend once said, in the end, every game isn't winnable, but if you aren't reflecting on your games and actively improving on your own gameplay, then you'll struggle to climb. Once you perfect your own play, you'll climb naturally. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. That sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.